they really are remarkable. They've become the conscience of the journalistic world, which is, is, has been an excellent discipline. I think, to some extent, importing the rigorous fact-checking that remains uh, part, very much part of the American culture still. Um, I mean, just, just briefly looking at, at Brexit, um, I think that I, having very strongly argued for Remain in, in the various columns I write, and now looking back on that time and wondering why uh, those of us who argued for Remain failed, um, I think that what happened was the Remain argument was, was very much couched in terms of a kind of blizzard of statistics, um, a bombardment of, of claims about you know, how much you'd lose and how bad it would be for your household and how tax would rise and be an emergency budget and all these things. And there was very little, there was no real positive story for the EU. I mean, the thing that really made me sad was I felt there was a very strong case a positive story about immigration. Um, now I've got a, a dog in that race because I'm, you know, the son of an immigrant, and I believe very strongly in a multicultural, multi-ethnic society. So I can't claim to be uh, wholly objective, but I still think that the whole narrative that that, that was so central to the pro-Brexit campaign that, that this was somehow going to transform uh, immigration levels and, by implication, the culture of the country was, was both very dangerous and unfortunately, because it was unopposed, had some traction. And this was the problem, was that the, the Leave campaign was diabolical and mendacious and horrible and very effective because it, it, it aligned two principal themes. One was the idea that leaving the EU was going to uh, produce a dividend for the NHS thus making something that was negative into something that was very positive. It happened to be a complete lie, it won't happen, but it was very, very effective. And the second um, was that the taking back control slogan became a kind of argument by proxy, which was weaponized by the paramilitary wing in Leave.eu, the Farage Aaron Banks wing, into a, a more or less openly xenophobic message, which brought in a, a whole other tranche of voters. Now, I can't say for sure, and no one can, how many people voted for xenophobic reasons in the Brexit uh, referendum. But what's for sure was it didn't have to be that many because the margin of victory was comparatively small. And this is what the Brexit campaign got right, was they understood that it was at the margins that this was going to be won. And I'm afraid they outplayed the Remain campaign. And I was talking to some Remainers the other night who were still fighting the fight with money and, and hoping that various parliamentary uh, procedures can be used and, and so on to, to thwart Brexit and a second referendum held. And all of that may be so, but what was depressing was to hear them say, oh, the facts have changed now, you see, because people will have realised that it's really bad for them. As if all the people in South Shields who voted Brexit are going to go, oh, yeah, yeah, and Nick Clegg and Tony Blair and, and, and David Miliband all say that it's bad. I now realise how stupid I was. And that in that kind of thought, which they would never articulate in quite that language, um, lies the problem, which is that, that, that you, can, you can defeat post-truth simply by battering it with a big stick marked fact, and you can't.